can you hear me? Yes, yes, fantastic. Thank you, thank you. Thanks a lot for the introductions. Uh, the news is that uh, Rahul uh, found my questions too controversial, so uh, possibly that's the reason why he's not here. No, no, he's joining us. His flight got delayed slightly, uh, so he will be here, and that's why I've left the chair. Nothing to do with that I'm, uh, you know, allergic to Suresh or, or, or anything like that. But uh, so, you know, I think the topic is fairly clear. First of all, welcome to the first panel discussion of the day. It is about Gen AI impact on creativity. Uh, a fantastic uh, discussion to start the, big, the, the day with almost. Um, a, a small caveat. There is no use of Gen AI that we have done in our conversations. We will keep it very real, uh, very honest, and that's the promise uh, I've got from all of them. Uh, you know, when, when, we were, when we were discussing this, when I was thinking about it, I said, if we were having this discussion two years back, I would have said, what AI? Nothing's going to impact creativity. It will remain the same. But two years down the line, I think AI or Gen AI is reality. It is impacting creativity in many ways. Good or bad, we'll figure out in the next 45 minutes. Uh, but let me, let me begin the, the discussion, uh, possibly with you, uh, Suresh. So I'll, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, AI is all about uh, disrupting status quo. Uh, when you disrupt something, not all would be good and not all would be bad. Uh, your point of view on what you feel is the good and the bad of generative AI, and like I said, Suresh, honest. Uh, hello. Yeah, thanks, uh, Amit. I think, uh, uh, first of all, I'll start with the disclaimer. Uh, that I'm not really a big expert in terms of AI and probably cannot, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that I can make a comprehensive view that I can share on this. Uh, in fact, what consoles me is uh, that even the, uh, the developers of these AI tools themselves uh, uh, often find themselves surprised with what, uh, you know, uh, comes out of their tools and what are the capabilities and this emerging qualities and capabilities of, the, of, of those creations themselves. Um, so what is, uh, I think, at this stage, uh, you know, uh, people feel is about, is about the unpredictability itself of, of, of the AI and the Gen AI that we talk about. And hence, I think, uh, you know, uh, as we go forward, there'll be definitely a lot more of, 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 of developments and a lot more of applications across various various uh, areas of not just marketing and creativity, but across, across various operations. And we've, we've been seeing, uh, you know, such developments. Good and bad, uh, yeah, I think um, uh, there are already we can see in terms of in marketing, we can see the use of AI in various tools which is leading or which could lead uh, even more towards building efficiencies, personalization, personalization at scale, uh, or even the overall effectiveness of, uh, of the communication and so on. And uh, not just in, in marketing, but like I said, healthcare and other areas, we're seeing that there's this tremendous amount of, uh, you know, uh, developments which are actually good and enabling. Uh, bad, of course, we've also seen the bad in the last few uh, weeks and months where, you know, those uh, deep fakes and those images and 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 uh, and uh, you know uh, I think we'll have to get over quite a bit of uh, those bads as well and how those are regulated I think will be very critical as we move forward. Yeah, I know, and and I and I would tend to agree with you. It's it's super exciting to see where we are heading. It's also scary in in some ways. Uh, Catherine, would would you want to put your thoughts on it uh, when we were discussing just before this? You had an interesting view on, on the good and the bad. Is, is there anything that you would want to share? Yeah, I think, thanks, Amit, and thank you for having us. And um, LinkedIn, thrilled to be sponsoring the, the digital report this year. Um, really happy to be here. I'm an optimist, so part of that optimism is, is driven by the data, which, you know, everything points to AI being a massive boost for, for growth, for economies, for industries, all of that. So 
I'll start there, which is where much of my optimism comes from. For sure, it's disruption when it comes to creativity and content. Every aspect of the value chain is getting disrupted. But when I think about you know, the industry that I've always been a part of, marketing and advertising, we are the best in the world at taking disruption and technological disruption and turning it into creativity and innovation and making it good for the world. So most of what I'll say today starts from that, that optimism. On LinkedIn, you know, we, it, what we see when it comes to what our members have been doing over the last year, conversations around AI, you know, we all know this, they've exploded around our dinner tables and in our workplaces, but they've exploded on LinkedIn. So 70% increase year over year on conversations around AI on our platform, 80 plus percent uh, increase in learning courses. So I'm sure many of you in the room, I certainly have been, we're taking advantage of LinkedIn learning courses around AI and Gen AI. And that's just really, again, it makes me so optimistic to see that people are upskilling, they're not you know, letting fear kind of hold them back. The bad, you know, there's always a bad side to disruption. I think much, much of my sort of concerns around AI are in the area of ethics. You know, we'll get onto that, I think, a bit later. Something very close to my heart and that we see coming through in some research we recently did with the World Economic Forum is that AI, if we're not careful, has the potential to widen a gender gap that already exists. So we have to make sure, as we are on the cusp of this becoming really mainstream, that we make sure that the models and the algorithms don't widen that gap, um, and also that women and men have equal access and equal opportunity to the careers that will open up in AI. So the bad for me, if we assume everybody will do what they're supposed to do, lies more in that space, but I think we're gonna chat a bit more later. It's fantastically put, Catherine. I, I, you know, it's, it's a balanced view, uh, and yes, we should be, I know there, is, there, is, there are reasons to be scared of, but there are more reasons to be excited about clearly there. So, so yeah, I think that's, that's, a, that's a good view and, uh, and thank you for this. Okay, now let's get a little more specific since we're talking about marketing and digital and we have you know, some of the best minds in marketing and digital in this country and even from Singapore uh, here. So, so of course I'll have to ask, uh, AI is making its presence felt in, on the creative side of things. Uh, it is impacting the world, uh, and especially from, from where, I, where I see, uh, it is a huge impact. Uh, so would love to hear, say, Pierre, uh, from your point of view, how is it impacting creativity? Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, fully agree on you, uh, especially because you control my profile on LinkedIn. Um, uh, it's a, it's a pretty Pretty big question, actually, yeah, that you raised. Uh, we, we can talk hours uh, about that. I think the first, the first thing we, we saw, and, and I don't talk only for India, I talk about all the initiatives we took in the 52 countries. So one is a learning process before anything else. Nothing is definitive. At that stage, we are in the, at the beginning of the learning curve about what AI can bring on creativity. The first thing that is very obvious to us is the capability of personalization. Uh, we've been extremely, extremely impressed by that because we were doing pilot that became very strong campaign. So we were trying on small samples and the small samples became a campaign by the, it became viral. The first initiatives we took became viral by itself. So actually we we're trying to go under the radar and it became very visible. The capability of personalization is, is amazing, because we to just talk about that. We don't talk to a consumption pool anymore. We talk to individuals, literally to individuals. Um, first of all, because we embark them in the, in, in the experience itself. Mm. They are engaged in the experience of the, of the brand. They participate to something. It's not passive, it's not just a push, it becomes a pool. So that's the beauty of it. It's extremely, extremely uh, impressive. I would like to highlight very quickly, I don't want to talk too much, but three main things that impacted the creativity at that stage. One is the scalability. What we've been able to do for one brand has been applicable to all brands. Mm. We don't have two, but it's definitely possible. Yeah. The scalability. So 
all of us, we, 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 and all of you, by the way, we all manage a range of products. We manage different sectors on different industries. Um, one technology is applicable to the entire portfolio, scalability. The second one is the doability. Um, at the beginning, it's not easy to address AI because we don't know the tools. We need to learn them. We need to study them. We need to, um, we need to pay for them. Some are free, some are paid. But it has to stay doable. We, can, we don't have the luxury to build a nuclear plant to tick the box about my CMO, I did some AI initiative, and I shine. No. Uh, it needs to stay doable. The doability is very important. And the last one is the return on investment. Does it bring really value to the company? Is the campaign really, and I'm looking to you straight in the eyes, a bit. Um, <laughs> don't, don't love uh, your concern, too. Um, does it really bring an impact on the consumer? And it, it's a yes at that stage. Uh, all the KPIs we all monitor in this room, the classical digital KPIs, uh, very classical, the engagement rate, the views, the time spent, and all of this. Um, what we saw, the trend is we double the numbers. We double the numbers on everything, on everything. So AI brings real value on the classical way to read, but that's not enough. Because actually, that's a very basic way to assess and evaluate the impact on creativity. The next one, it's, that's the impact on the consumer. But we should also analyze the impact on our industry here. The time we spend to build a campaign, the cost of, of the agency, the cost of the creativity, the time we save to get this personalization. The impact is massive as well. So it's not only an impact on the on the consumer, it's as well an impact in terms of creativity, I mean, no? the impact in the um, internal process to make it happen. So actually, both of it are for the moment positive. Uh, I just don't want to talk right now about the bad side. So we, will, we are extremely excited about it, but we are very cautious about it as well. Uh, we have very strong guidelines about in the, at the group level about how can we use AI on creatives because you don't know where it could bring your brands. It could cr create an impact on the brands, the brand itself, which is the core of what we sell. So we have a lot of caveats and a lot of precaution now in place. Fantastic. Uh, I'll use that in my next talk, scalability, doability, return on investment. Not painted. It's not patented as yet. As yet. Uh, I sent you an invoice. <laughs> So, Catherine, uh, and, and then I can come to Apurva, uh, to you on this. I would love to get your views on how AI is impacting creativity or would impact creativity. So, so love your views on that. Apurva, would you like to, would you like to kick us off? Hi, good evening. I'm Apurva Maheshwari. I head marketing at Bestseller India. Bestseller is a fashion retailer, and we retail some of the largest uh, menswear as well as women's wear and kids' wear fashion brands in the country, like Jack and Jones, Vero Moda, Selected, and Only. So you may know us by these brand names and not so much by Bestseller. Um, in terms of how, uh, you know, how the marketing team at Bestseller as well as our agency partners have been adopting AI and Gen AI specifically over the last, and, and these terms started floating around in the marketing circles only in the last 12 to say 18 months, right? Uh, but they've scaled very quickly and so has the adoption as Catherine was saying. I think marketers are uh, one of the most creative people in, in any boardroom, right? So the adoption of it has really been across the marketing delivery per se, right? Whether it is uh, uh, whether it's driving faster consumer insights or doing better insight mining or whether, you know, from, an, from a marketing point of view, uh, sharpening of brief creation from the agency point of view, uh, generating more uh, options or directions on campaigns uh, from a media planning point of view, you know, driving advertising efficiencies, making sure that 
we are able to place these campaigns in front of audiences or in front of users or uh, you know individuals as pierre was saying because eventually everything is now boiling down to a segment of one um, placing these creatives or these ads in front of audiences that are the most likely to transact um, as well as leveraging uh, ai and gen ai in experiential marketing so we've we've seen a, a adoption by bestseller as well as our agency partners as well as you know a lot of uh, a lot of brands and uh, companies across different sectors in the last 12 to 16 18 months or fantastic uh, the bell outside is a you know it's like a like button it really liked your comment that's why the bell outside <laughs> Catherine, your your view right. on this see any i could not come up with that's that a, <laughs> the, that that's a nice way to make the bell Enhancing of our of our now, now wait for the bell now. If Catherine. the bell doesn't go off while I'm speaking now, I'll be I'll be very, I'll be I'll be very disappointed. I think the, you know, there's there's naturally a lot of fear around, uh, it, you know, I would say in the marketing creative industry, is AI going to do copywriters or creative directors or even all of us as marketers out of a job? And I think, I hope everybody in this room feels differently to that because. You know, another another reason for my optimism is that, you know, I think finally we have a situation where that New Year's resolution we've all had for the last 10, 20 years to be more creative or find more time in our day-to-day -day lives for creative pursuits or thinking creatively at work, we finally have the chance to do that. You know, the excuse can be removed where we can now delegate so many of our admin tasks or the things that can be automated or the things that can be done just good enough to AI to Gen AI, whether you are a fan of Gen AI writing your emails or your LinkedIn posts, I, I'm not so much, but I think it's amazing for getting a thought on paper, getting you started, and then really speeding up the creative process. So um, I, think, I think about creativity in this new age as human-led and AI-powered. Uh, I think if you think that um, AI might take a copywriter's job, you've never tried to put a, a prompt that is that you've badly written into ChatGPT because you'll see what you get out at the end. It is not not fit for purpose. So there is still so much room for craft and creativity and human-led uh, strategy. Just hopefully a lot less time for us all to spend on the on the stuff we have been trying to get off our desks for for many years. I, I, I love that view. So what you're saying is actually it'll get us to spend more time on creativity. I hope, and I the hope basics so. basics possibly out of the window, which, yeah, is, which, is, yeah. which is a fantastic so. view. And, and, and yeah, it, it's music to my ears too. So fantastic. Thanks, Catherine. Uh, again, I'm, okay, let's think about examples, right? Which possibly that you would have done or you would have heard about or read about somewhere, uh, which would have excited you. Uh, Suresh, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you. Are there any examples that you think on AI, on the creativity side of it, that, that are exciting for you? Yeah, so um, before we get there, you know, um, basically AI, as I understand the tools, it's the ability to manipulate and generate language, whether it be in the form of words, images, or sound, right? At the moment, what we see is uh, the AI is working or, or playing the role of a collaborator rather than a competitor. Um, and, 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 uh, like, and of course, uh, there are uh, several use cases and examples that I can think of, uh, especially what has been mentioned in the past about personalizing, reaching out to the, to, you know, to the last customer based on the preferences of that consumer. Uh, in terms of reading a lot of data and then making, uh, 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 you know, based on the customer preferences, making some decisions, so making it more efficient and uh, and, and reaching out and so on. Um, we have AI-powered chatbots, conversational bots, which uh, are, are getting there in terms of uh, replying or responding to consumers' queries and so on. Uh, in fact, we tried uh, just a couple of months, last couple of months back, in terms of looking at various messages uh, in the same month, but based on the consumer response, which creative to serve to whom, uh, you know, based on the, uh, the individual consumer's response. Nice. So, so I think there are uh, examples uh, of what we've been doing. But going forward, there is this, this whole discussion and this whole debate over uh, creativity and whether, uh, you know, uh, the AI would be able to deliver on that and, uh, you know, so on. But 
I think creativity is all about reading a pattern and then and then breaking it in to find new way of coming, you know, put, putting it across. And I'm sure, I'm sure we'll get to a stage where even in terms of creative work, uh, there will be definitely uh, some progress, and 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 uh, and probably AI tools will only help us, like as, like you were saying, uh, sp you know, spare more time uh, and and make it more effective, and also uh, personalization scale. For example, we've seen some examples of. Uh, hyper local, you know, one creative reaching out to many different geographies, actually talking to those geographies uh, with a message which was relevant to to them. Right. Yeah. So uh, similar is the case with, I mean, that's about geography and hyper local. But there could be other examples of of uh, of personal uh, personalized, uh, you know, communication. And I'm sure that uh, uh, you know there'll be a there there will be a lot more of effectiveness and efficiency and personalization which will come up going forward with. Uh, oh, it's fantastic. Yeah. I, so so uh, what, I, what I hear you say is that there are some exciting things that are happening which you are, which you are happy about, but there are lots on the horizon. And before I, before I move to you, Purva, welcome Rahul. Thank you. Uh, the, the news on the floor is that you got Hello, really hello Rahul. <laughs> <laughs> the news on the floor is that you got worried with the Questions being very controversial, so you t decided to skip. But no, you're here, so no, no. But welcome. Uh, I know you've had a delayed flight. Yeah. Uh, you want some water? I'm anything? good. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Thank so, you. so we'll we'll carry on. Apoor, uh, on on your your any examples uh, I do have actually one. that we would love to hear from you. Uh, I uh, the Coke masterpiece campaign that was released uh, at the end of last year uh, was to me a really good example of human powered creativity uh, which was supercharged by ai uh, it it was essentially what a good creative is right succinct effective and clutter breaking so uh, and there are a lot more such examples but that's one that immediately comes at the top of my mind i'm really hoping to see more and more creative work in india and from india that leverages uh, gen ai specifically uh, that uh, is you know is effective as a creative and a campaign. Fantastic. Uh, I think the co the Coke exact just love to add a a, f a few that have inspired me and and us even at LinkedIn. And the Coke example is a great. I think it's a great example of something that is available now for us all as marketers and brands to to do and to use, which is involve consumers. So. Consumers are out there creating using Gen AI faster than, than most brands can do it. So the opportunity to co-create with them, as, as Coke did, um, is a great one. I think also we've seen in, in LinkedIn campaigns, Salesforce and Adobe are, are examples of two brands who've sort of taken the first mover advantage to power their campaign. So their campaigns about AI that show best practice in using AI. So if you've seen Salesforce using Matthew McConaughey, or a, an AI-generated version of Matthew McConaughey, just to really show they're all in on AI through their creatives as well as their product. I think that's an inspiring approach for, for many technology brands. Adobe have done something similar where their creatives are really, you know, a bit like the Dentsu Digital Report, if I could say, really created using best-in-class visual um, AI tools to, to show that Adobe are at the forefront of this. There are also lots of brands having a bit of fun with the limitations of, of AI. So there was a great campaign by Mint Mobile, which is Ryan Reynolds' telecom brand, one of his many companies, uh, where they used ChatGPT to create the script. And Ryan Reynolds is reading out this very clumsy script generated by ChatGPT. So I think there's still an advantage for, for brands and marketers to, I guess, play on the novelty of the technology as well. Those are some inspiring examples that, that I've seen in the last few months. Fantastic. That's a lot of examples. On, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, would you, Rahul, have any example on, on, on any brand using AI that you've been fascinated with or possibly your brand, whichever? So, um, not a specific, I think most of the best examples have already been talked about, but I see today uh, how media companies are leveraging it is because they know uh, that, you know, optimization of a campaign, of a media campaign, uh, can give you diminishing returns after a certain while. So, how they are using generative AI to ensure that they have uh, the right kind of content strategy, uh, which is powered by a dynamic content optimization, backed up with the media to ensure that they get uh, different versions of the creative for different people for different time, 
uh, so that they can get the right optimization of the money that they're spending, the dollar that they're spending uh, for each media campaign. So I think uh, the utilization is happening both at the end of optimizing the media in terms of uh, the dollars that you're spending and also uh, creating different kinds of creatives to ensure that uh, it, it peaks up uh, after just the media optimization kind of flattens out. It's, it's brilliant, right? We're talking about, we've, we've spoken about different examples. We've spoken about examples which have been fascinating because it's heightened creativity. You know, you give so many examples. We're also talking about examples where it is heightened effectiveness. So, so you know, it's, it's working on, on both the spectrums. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So I guess not so much to worry about AI, I guess. It's, it's all good. Uh, I mean, I think you, you, you point to something really important there, Amit, which is you can, you, can re you can experiment and you can find out what works maybe quicker than you could before and then you can turbocharge it. You know, most of the digital platforms now are offering AI-powered campaign planning tools. We have, we have one at, at LinkedIn called Accelerate. You know, you can, you can discover what works and then you can put, you know, a lot of um, power behind that and move on to your next brief, your next campaign, your next experiment, which is really exciting. That's fantastic, yeah, I completely agree. Okay, let's spice things up a little bit, okay? We, we, we're talking about simple, straightforward stuff. Let's talk about ethics. Uh, the rights and the wrongs. So, okay, uh, Rahul, since you've come in late, let me start with you. Uh, your view uh, on on the ethics of AI, and and you know you, you work in Microsoft, so would, I'm sure there is a deeper dwell that you've had on, on on this. So, love to hear your view on it. Yeah, I think uh, ethics is a, is a very fundamental part of the AI model that uh, that we work on right now in Microsoft. But eventually, I've seen all big tech companies have this model of responsible AI, where ethics is an important pillar. So transparency, fairness, trust um, um, are some of the others. But uh, ethics is a very important part of the way that we kind of work on. Now, there are two parts to the ethics uh, that that we work on. One is that uh, anything that you create using the AI, uh, we don't hold any copyright content on that. It's, it's something that you use the technology to create for and it's something that you kind of work on. Also, we make sure that uh, the, the sources from which we've kind of worked on are all, the, the data that's been sourced, the data lakes that's been worked on are all trusted sources, are being ethically aligned and uh, you know, worked on to a level where we also say that, okay, if there is, while using Microsoft products in a way that we've kind of agreed on as per the agreement, um, if there is any incident that happened where there is a controversy or there is um, a debate on some things, we will be there with our customers to help them uh, have that uh, problem solved. So it's very, very important that when you talk about ethics, it's, it's the ethics falls at three level. Um, the user, the service provider, um, and the end customer. And I think that's how the whole balance will come into the ecosystem. Fantastic, I think uh, what, what, what I hear you say is that there is so much of background and back-end work which has already gone into it to make sure that we are as right as possible. Oh, we are ethics. continuously working on that, everyone, all big tech companies. And I see that right now, the effort, the consciousness, because that's the trust is a basic currency on which e-commerce work. And if that's broken, nothing will work on. Fantastic. Uh, Catherine, uh, your, your view on it, and then I would love Pierre also to give his, his two cents there. But yeah, Catherine, start with you. Yeah, I think you know, the, the optimism that I keep referring to you know, is felt. We've see it, seen it on, uh, with uh, some research we've done at LinkedIn where you have overwhelming majorities of CEOs and, and C-level executives feeling optimistic about the potential of AI for their organizations. So that's there. However, consumers, who are also professionals, we're all consumers and professionals, only 30-something percent of us trust organizations to do the right thing with AI. So there's a gap there. And I think while we, while we have to rely on the, you know, the Microsofts and the, the regulatory bodies of the world to do the right thing, I think there's a huge onus on us all as organizations, individuals, marketing teams, agencies, to put our own responsible practices in from the start. And 
you know, I really feel that in some ways we have an opportunity with AI to do that where with social media as, a, as, a, as an example, we were all late to the game. You know, social media came and then a number of years later, you know, there was a rush to regulate, there was a rush to put, um, you know, rules and best practices in place. And I really think we have that opportunity to build it into AI from the beginning. And then I think, you know, the other one that is, you know, really, really important to me is the, that progress in AI does not set the DEI progress back. Um, because we can see that women are more likely to be in the jobs that might be displaced by AI and men are more likely to be in the jobs that will be augmented um, and made more powerful by AI. So India is one of the largest AI talent pools in the world. So I hope that in this country, at least, that can be a balanced opportunity um, and certainly that we all do everything we can to, to make sure that's the case. Fantastic. Pia, any, any view on this? Um, yes. I think the, in terms of ethics, everything is it's about using AI to convince versus using AI's, AI to manipulate. If I can send, um, sum, summarize it in one sentence, it's exactly that. Do we intend to use AI to really increase consideration and, and, and convince our consumers or manipulate the data we have from them to convince them? And I think that's the very the, sh the resource hedge we are currently working on. Um, and I fully agree, regulation should come very soon. We should really all contribute to regulate this, because otherwise I think we, will, we could easily go to the dark side yeah. of it. Uh, you started to mention it, there is a dark side of it. So we, have, we started with very clear guardrails in the company. Many companies have started to put really rules. Um, and the common points in the conversation I can have with my counterparts, where is the data? Where is the data? Who is really using the data? And that's the risk we are facing now, is that when we, co when we subscribe to an AI tool, we give the data as a company, as a brand. We share the data from the consumer, but from the brand itself, from the company itself. When we share uh, a TG, socio demo and passion points and very basic things, we are sourcing the data. We are sourcing the AI. So, and I will conclude on this. Um, we have a very strict rule in the company. Do not put the name of the brand on ChatGPT. Do not put any data, market share, pricing, whatever. Because the moment you do that, you make your information public. You don't know where the information you give on ChatGPT to understand, I say, hey, I'm fighting with a market share of 35 and uh, my competitor, no, no, no. You source the system and it becomes public. So for instance, and don't put your first name, last name. You never know where you, your name will land. In Australia, in Groenland, you don't know. So that's the limit of the data. Fantastic. I yeah, yeah, absolutely, Raul. So I'm saying uh, it's a great example of what you're saying, that how it's, very imp it's, it's super crucial for organizations to not put internal data on chat GPT and how we're kind of working on it. And that's why we're working very closely with the enterprise to create something which is called the Bing Enterprise. And you can give, um, you know, guardrails to the, to the model in terms of making sure that none of the internal data goes outside. Um, and how it kind of becomes intelligent on your own data, and then that shouldn't go out in any way. So that's one part of it. The second thing uh, where I think we talked about how ethics have been not only uh, put in by the governments, uh, by the companies, but by the users as well. Uh, as well. And I have came across this recent example of uh, Taylor Swift, where all the Swifties came together and really defended um, her and, and the way that they've kind of uh, put up the, the right pictures down there and really kind of put awareness about it. I think that was just a great example of uh, how the companies, um, the governments and regulators and, and users are right now being conscious about this and are working towards it. That's fantastic. So basically what I'm hearing everyone say is whether it's a platform, whether it's the marketers, everyone is conscious of it and working towards it. But at the same time, this is one to embrace wholeheartedly, which is fantastic, and it's a great news there. Uh, quickly, 
uh, we'll probably go with 30 second views on, and this is a selfish question, my point of view, which is what do you expect from your agency when it comes to AI? And I'll put that to Apurva, Pierre, and Suresh, you there. All right, so very quickly uh, to our agency partners and to agencies, it is very tempting to plug in AI solutions and Gen AI solutions in campaigns, in media planning, et cetera. Um, especially in creative campaigns, it's also very, um, so as, as I said, it's tempting, but it's also a lot of sameness in ideas that as a marketer you end up seeing, right? Uh, the moment a brief goes out from the company, the intent is for uh, the agency partners to be able to come back with creative solutions. And uh, every idea cannot be an AI-powered idea because then it's not creative. Uh, it may be creative, but it's not clutter-breaking enough, right? So uh, give in to the temptation sometimes, but also sometimes resist on uh, you know charging a campaign with uh, AI solutions. That's one. And to the marketing teams as well. Um, and there it will be that it is not just the marketing department in an organization which is experimenting with AI. It is every single department, whether it's HR, whether it's IT, whether it is your sales teams, whether it is, in, in our case, we have a huge product development team, which is uh, the brand team, right? We, they design clothes. So you're seeing AI being integrated across various uh, business functions, right? Uh, so to be able to approach it not from a lens of fear or from you know being defensive about it, but to really embrace it and see how can it drive efficiencies uh, and help you work better with other departments. Fantastic. I'm taking a few cues. Pierre, you. Um, very quickly, 30 seconds. It's ongoing, Arvinder. Uh, we are currently building a project of AI with you right now. I uh, cannot disclose, but uh, it's ongoing is to push the client to clarify the brief. Because AI, we think that everything is possible, that we can go everywhere in every direction and everything is doable. Um, is to push us more to go potentially in, in a brief way more precise than what we used to share with an agency. Because otherwise it can go in so many different directions that we can lose our time and our energy and our money to look after the right solution on AI. Fantastic. Suresh, we'd we'll love to get your view on it too. Yeah, quickly, three things. Uh, quite optimistic that there will be extensive usage of AI and uh, AI, uh, you know, tools uh, across various functions. And uh, eventually, like you know, I said, uh, building on efficiencies, personalization at scale, hyper-local, and, and also overall effectiveness. <clears throat> Not just in marketing, but across various industries, uh, I think there is a lot of potential, and I'm sure there will be a lot more rapidly, you know, you know a lot of developments rapidly uh, coming up. Uh, at the same time, uh, I think there's been a discussion around the ethics. So it's, it's uh, any technology comes with uh, its set of uh, the goods and, of course, the, the issues. Um, it all depends on who's using it, how and with what intent. And I'm sure we'll also see, I think, a very good example there about the social media and how the yeah. regulation is caught up. So I think we'll uh, also, uh, uh, you know, we also look forward and we'll probably see a lot more of uh, these uh, regulations and other uh, such safeguards uh, being built by both organizations and the governments and and whatever going forward. I'm sure, uh, quite optimistic that it'll definitely be quite effective. That's fantastic. So last question, a quick one, quick point of view from everyone. We're sitting in 2025. Uh, expectations from AI, uh, and we can, we can start from Catherine. I'm always very wary of predictions, especially when an event is being re-recorded. we're recording this it's one. It's being recorded, so I'll keep it, I'll keep it relatively safe and, and they're linked, um, because this is such a fast-moving uh, area. Um, firstly, is we'll just, in a year's time, we'll be talking about it less and doing it a lot more. 
Um, and I think it's okay if you're not if you're not there yet, if you're not individually or as a brand trying out AI or generative AI in your marketing yet, that's okay. And um, we all need to have the growth mindset. So my new one this week is Perplexity, which is an AI powered search engine that I'm trying out. Maybe it'll be around in a year, maybe it won't. But I think just that experimentation is really important for all of us. And the second is something we see at LinkedIn, which is that the talent gap is just going to continue to widen between people who are gaining skills in Gen AI and AI and those who are not. So I think um, employers are going to increasingly look for these skills and that gap will be more pronounced in a year than it is right now. Fantastic. Apurva, your, your take on it. I'm hoping by 2025 we are using AI more responsibly. We are making sure that we are weeding out the biases that we have as humans um, and the output that goes through AI is uh, sans those biases. Sorry, come again? Is, is sans those, is, is without those biases. Fantastic, yeah. Pia? I still don't have the answer. <laughs> uh, no, most seriously. Um, it's just to get a better world, that AI is here to help and not to play against us. That's it, because it's a little bit scary, to be honest. Just wish that the AI will bring value instead of destroying value from a consumer perspective, but as well from a, a ca career perspective, from an employment perspective. It's a wish. Good wish, I guess. Suresh, anything to add on that from, from your side since you touched on it? Uh, I did touch on that, but yeah, just to add, like I said, we've probably done something around personalization and uh, you know the hyperlocal stuff, but. Uh, on the language processing that AI works on, uh, whether it is <coughs> words, images, or sounds, I think we still have to do a little more on uh, the words, probably with, with somewhere there, but then the images and the sounds. Uh, 2025, look forward to getting somewhere. It's there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Rahul, closing remarks from you since you came late. <laughs> I would love to see this community using AI as a co-pilot and sure. solving real human problems uh, with creative, uh, you know, with creativity going into it, with a lot of innovation going into it. So I think that's what I'm hoping for. And um, uh, that's, what, that's what the best combination is, when most creative brains in the country use AI as a co-pilot and solve some of the basic human problems that we're facing today. Fantastic, thank you. I think uh, a huge round of applause for, for all five of them. Uh, I am far more positive, excited about AI and creativity now. I hope all of us are. Uh, are there any questions that we want to put across to these fantastic panel members? It's, are there? I know, time's over. It says two minutes over time. Uh, no? No? Going one, going two, going three. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>